I just realized I'm wearing the same shirt that I filmed in last weekend. <laughs> uh, today, as you know from the title of this video, is another book haul. I've done more book hauls recently because I quite like the idea of doing more frequent but smaller book hauls. Kind of holds me accountable to my book buying rules because I have to look at everything that I buy and think about it and then tell you guys about it. These are eight books that I've acquired over the last two months or however long it's been since my last book haul. My rampant book buying recently was precipitated by me discovering a book that I very, very badly wanted in a nice edition. I was looking through Small Beer Press's back catalog and went, holy cow, they did this thing. It's beautiful and it's still available. So I bought it and it was $35. I do not regret it at all. And that is a special hardcover edition of The Privilege of the Sword by Ellen Kushner. This is the second book by my counting in the Riverside series, and I very, very much like it. I am sad that there aren't matching hardcover editions of Swords Point and The Fall of the Kings. Apparently, Small Beer Press didn't do that, but even if this never matches any other books I have in the series, so I don't have the other two yet. I cannot be sad that I bought this because it's really nice. I'll try to do a closer up, close up shot of this so you don't have glare and I'm rather far away from the camera today. Under the dust jacket, it's also quite nice. It's this, I don't know, a dark maroon or burgundy color with the, the gold lettering and the spine is also very nice. I like when naked hardcovers look like this. I don't need there to be extra art underneath, but I do like it when it has visible lettering and everything. It's just really well done. The inside of this book doesn't use the typeface that most small beer press books are in. It's the original typeface and chapter stylings that are in the um, trade paperback version that I read from the library, so I think it's just the original, whatever the original publisher decided to do. However, I have a huge fondness for the typeface that Small Beer Press uses inside their books, and when I ordered The Privilege of the Sword, I also got two others. I'll show you this one first because I've already talked about it. Uh, At the Mouth of the River of Bees, stories by Kidge or Kaige Johnson, and I bought this even though there were a couple of stories in here that I really did not like. The ones I really did not like, Ponies and Spar, I think. Yeah, Spar is the one that's like alien rape sex or whatever on a ship. It was weird and I didn't get ponies at all, but I needed to own this just so that I had a physical copy of The Cat Who Walked a Thousand Miles and the novella The Man Who Bridged the Mist. I love those stories so much. The Man Who Bridged the Mist is just an amazing fantasy, fantastical story. Just go read it. The t I was talking about typefaces. The typeface used in this is Centaur MT, and it's very distinctive. I, I can open up any book and almost know immediately that it's Small Beer Press, and I love them. And the third book that I got by them, I haven't read yet, and that is You Have Never Been Here, New and Selected Stories by Mary Rickard. Now, look at this cover. I am so irritated about the alignment. They did the same thing here that they kind of did on the cover of Prodigies by Angelica Guadalajara, where the title of the book is centered, and then they have this, was it, left justification of the subtitle and the author's name, but the, it's like not actually in the center. Has anybody else noticed that and it drives you nuts? Why do they do that? I hate it. I really like the overall design. I really like the image they used for it. It's very stark and almost horror looking, though I don't think it's really horror stories. I decided to buy this because I read a story in here that was reprinted on tour, Cold Fires, really enjoyed it, and there are a couple of award-winning stories in here as well. I just thought I'm gonna like her writing style and I've heard great things about Mary Rickert. Very highly spoken of, and I think I'm gonna really enjoy the style she writes her stories in, even if some of them might go a bit more into the suspenseful or horror genre, since she won a Shirley Jackson Award. <laughs> that kind of tells you. So the back of this says, none of this has ever happened. You haven't either. 
is that that's a very welcome to Night Vale thing to say. Um, open this book to any page and find yourself inspelled by these lush alchemical stories. Faced with the uncanny and the impossible, Rickert's protagonists are as painfully, shockingly, complexly human as the readers who will encounter them. Mothers, daughters, witches, artists, strangers, <laughs> winged babies, and others grapple with, dece with deception, loss, and moments of extraordinary joy. So. I'm really looking forward to this. I've been really into reading short story collections this year. I've been just reading a lot more short fiction in general. I seem to have figured out what kind of stories I like and that I that I can expect to enjoy. So looking forward to this one. I got my hardcover edition of Two Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer. Now this is a cover that is much more impressive in person when you can see all the details than it is when you're just looking at the little thumbnail on your screen. I have seen the cover art for this and the cover art for the sequel, Seven Surrenders, and at the small size it's like, okay, yeah, that's kind of generic, soft, muted colors or whatever, but I got this and I looked at the spine for one, I thought, wow, when I have this entire series lined up and if they keep a consistent style for them, that's going to be really cool looking. I did a full length review of this book, so I will link that if you want to know more. Basically, I loved it. I loved it enough to buy my own copy and I'm looking forward to the second book even more because answers! The other one I pre-ordered is of course Central Station by La Vie Terrar. I talked about this in a weekly wrap-up. I should have done a separate review. I always say that, like I really love a book and I should have done a separate review, but I didn't because time. Um, I had to get this. Number one, I love the book, but I also love this cover. This is the edition from Tachyon Publications here in the US. I've seen like two other cover designs for this and this is by far my favorite. It is very gray, lavender, purpley colored. It's very futuristic retro. It just absolutely suits the story and I love it. And the cover art is by Elizabeth Story. I feel like I should tell you like who actually did the cover art when I really like it. <laughs> the other book in this haul that I haven't read is Neveriona by Samuel R. Delaney. This is the second book in the Return to Neverion series that begins with the short story collection Tales of Neverion, which I really enjoyed and I mentioned it recently in my Overlooked Fantasy video for the booktube SFF Babbles, and that reminded me that I still didn't have the second volume because I wanted to continue reading the series, so I got this. These are very unassuming, not eye-catching covers. These are by Wesleyan University Press, but they have the entire series in matching editions, and these are the ones that kind of have that soft, buttery feel to them. It's a very soft finish, and I love the feel of these. I could just sit here all day like, mmm, yeah, tactile book porn. And it, the overall series is about a, an ex-slave barbarian named Gorgik who eventually leads a slave revolt in this fantasy world. It's sort of low fantasy, I think, because so far I don't recall there being any magic in it. <laughs> but I'm waiting for a god to show up or something like that. I find Delaney challenging to read because he talks in, at great depth with his sci-fi fantasy about issues, mainly sexuality and gender, that can make you uncomfortable if you are not really used to reading about it. And I like being pushed out of my comfort zone because while I might find him challenging, I think he is an amazing writer. Need to read much more of his stuff. Then we have the book that I was really unhappy when I got it because it is a craptastically beat up edition. I bought this secondhand on Amazon. It said it was in very good condition and it's not. It's got incredible shelf wear, it's yellowed, and it has water staining, and I was so unhappy. The book itself is Foundling by D.M. Cornish. This is the first book in the Foundling's Tale series, which is like a high middle grade, low young adult series. And I'll read you the back of this. I've already read this book. I read this whole series years ago, really loved it, and thought, I need to own copies of that series. So the back says, Growing up at Madame Opera's Society for Foundling Boys and Girls, Rosamund has led a life sheltered from the dangers of the world. But this all changes the day he is recruited into the ranks of the half-continent's lamplighters, soldiers who protect the Empire's roads from the monsters that hunt in the, in the wild. Which the monsters in this are incredibly imaginative. Now, Rosamund must begin the journey of his life, traveling the half-continent, a world full of people who can be as predatory as any monster he can imagine. 
and when he falls in with a mysterious and talented Europe, a teratologist, a monster hunter, who can shoot electricity out of her body and call lightning down from the sky, he learns that some people can be downright lethal. I love this series when I read it. DM Cornish did all the illustrations himself, herself, I think it's a man, and it has plates, it has incredibly detailed maps. Just, there's a hole um, back at the end that has even more at the end of the book. There's a full glossary with paragraphs upon paragraphs of explanation for things. And in the text itself, and most chapters have at least one illustration of a character or a monster. Um, I love it. I really love it. This is one of my favorites. This is the character of Europe. I've never mentioned this series before, but I rediscovered it when I was looking through things I had read on Goodreads. And I was like, why have I never talked about that? Because this is one middle grade young adult series that I could really highly recommend just for sheer creativity and great story, great character. I mean, it has a, it has a young boy named Rosamund in it. And I can't remember there's a reason why he has that name. <laughs> The final thing, really quickly, is Tales from Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. It's part of the Earthsea series. I'm collecting the entire series in these editions because I think they're really nice. They're not the most fantastic. They're a little bit generic looking, but they all match, and I like that. This is not the last one I have to get. I need to replace my copy of A Wizard of Earthsea someday because I still have my very small mass market edition that I had from high school. Tales from Earthsea, as you can tell from the title, is a collection of stories in the Earthsea series. I read this so many years ago. The only thing I remember about it is that I have read it. So yeah, eventually when I have the matching editions, I plan on doing a reread of the series, especially because since watching booktube i've discovered that more people think that the at least the first couple of books in the series are really problematic now and i kind of understand why from what people have told me and when i reread a chapter of a wizard of earth when i was talking to nicole from dorka brain eons ago and i was like oh yeah there are things in the first chapter that made me go yes i can see why this is problematic but i also know that the fourth book in the series is that fourth book tahanu is when Ursula Le Guin had a couple decades gap in the series and then came back to write more in the series after a shift in her own career, her own writing, which became much more um, mindfully feminist and stuff. And I think the later books in the series are supposed to reflect that much more. That's enough rambling from me though. Uh, let me know if you have any thoughts about these books that I showed. Sorry if this video is a mess. I'm really sorry, but I'm just having one of those Saturdays where I just feel like talking about things and being weird in myself. So I hope you enjoy that. And I will talk to you again soon.